Good evening, Parkview View family. Happy Wednesday. So glad that you could join us tonight around the Word of God for Bible study. Um, if you don't mind, just go ahead and like and share the broadcast. That'll just help everybody to remember that we're on. And uh, it'll also just spread God's Word around your family, friends, those who are on your friends list, and uh, just help us get the Word out. We're so excited tonight to be here and so glad that you've joined us. We do want to go to the Lord in prayer as we begin tonight, and we have several prayer needs that we've been praying about. Let me just uh, get the list here for you. Uh, quite an extensive list on the physical needs. Uh, prayer requests, Bob and Mabel Bagley, Luigi, Sylvia, Chris, Chuck and Sammy, Tina, Marilyn, Richard, Wanda, Lucille, Tiffany, Charlie, Faye, Shelby, Max, Heather, Donna, Rob, Nikki, Glenn, Carolyn, Joe, Aubrey, Eileen, Pat and Gary, uh, Howard, Richard, Joey, um, Joyce, Sam, Ben, Liz, Pat, and Janet. All of these folks we've been praying for. Maybe you have a prayer request that you could just put right there in the comment section and uh, just pray for one another through Facebook or YouTube. And uh, we'll just, just ask the Lord to minister in our hearts and lives. We also have our shut-ins that we're praying for, uh, Al, Alice, Wanda, Virginia, Barbara, Marguerite, Marie, Irma, and Norma. Norma also has a physical need in her body, needs healing, so let's pray for her. We're praying for uh, the whole COVID situation, uh, praying for our missionaries, of course, our community, our city, our country, and uh, we're just believing the Lord to help us in all of these areas. So if you don't mind, let's just join together. Let's pray and ask the Holy Spirit to move. And then towards the end of that prayer, let's ask God to open our hearts to the Word so that our hearts will be good ground. Let's pray together. Father, we come right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we lift up everyone on this list, God, that needs healing in their bodies. Lord, some of them are uh, chronic situations. Some of them are diseases. Some of them are COVID related, but God, you know every situation. And Lord, we know most importantly that you're more than able to heal, to deliver, and to set free. So Father, we pray right now in the name of Jesus that Lord, you would touch everyone on our prayer list tonight. We also pray God for our shut-ins, minister to them, move upon their hearts and in their lives. God, we're also praying for this whole COVID situation. Those who are sick, some of those were actually in our physical needs list, but Lord, also just others that are around in our communities, maybe distant relatives or friends or whatever. Lord, we pray that you would minister to them, those churches that's been affected, God. We pray in the name of Jesus for healing. We also pray, God, for deliverance. We pray, Lord, that you would just move mightily. Lord, we pray. We pray for uh, the workers, the nurses, doctors, all the frontline workers, first responders. Pray that you would help them minister to them, bless them. God, we do pray for our missionaries tonight. We pray that you would move upon them with your power. Continue to give them grace, resources, innovation, and Lord, may the ministry continue to flourish and grow. Lord, we do pray for our city, our community, our city, our country. Lord, we ask for a mighty move of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Lord, we also pray for this Bible study tonight. We pray that you would open our hearts to the Word of God, that you would speak to us, minister to us, help us, God, direct us. We pray that your Word would find good ground in our hearts and lives, and we will thank you, God, for what you do in us. In the wonderful and mighty name of Jesus, amen. Everybody said amen. Well, we're going to give to the Lord tonight. Uh, let me just uh, remind you of the ways that you can give electronically. Uh, here are uh, all of the ways that you can give electronically. Let me just show you how easy um, it is to give. And so I've got mine out. I haven't done anything in preparation. So I just opened up the app, got it to where I need it to be. And now let's see, I'm going to put in the amount that I want to give tonight. And I'm going to do it as a one-time gift. I did it as an offering. And then I just hit the next button and then the give. And it just sent it that quick. So it's really easy once you kind of get everything set up and going. So maybe you've been a little hesitant to give electronically. It's secure. 
It's a good way to give. You can actually give in such a way that you can set it and it just repeats itself. And so uh, thank you for your giving tonight. I appreciate all of you that are so faithful to the Lord to continue to bless the ministry of Parkview and your faithfulness uh, in the area of giving and prayer support. So tonight we have the wonderful privilege to welcome a guest teacher uh, to our broadcast. Some of you will know Paul, Paul Hollifield, of course, related to the Hollifields that we have in our church. Pastor Paul uh, pastors the uh, Commonwealth Christian Community Church in Crozet, Virginia, and he's a good friend of mine. We've traveled um, different places around the world on missionary trips, and so we are, we are buddies, and it is my honor that he is able to join us tonight. Here's an also uh, another informational tidbit that you might want to know. Paul uh, graduated the top of his class from the Parkview Christian Academy. And uh, I don't remember what year that was, but he was top of his class. And uh, so he's kind of coming home tonight virtually, and we're glad that he is able to join with us and uh, minister to us tonight from the Word of God. So I want you to open your hearts, open your ears, allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you, and now let's welcome Pastor Paul from Commonwealth Christian Community. Good evening, everybody. Uh, what a treat it is to be able to be with you tonight um, uh, here at Parkview Church of God on a Wednesday night. Now, of course, you know, I'm not at Parkview Church of God. If I were going to be honest, this is what I would have on the screen because I'm at my house. But uh, I'm recording this, and I told Terry I was going to be professional, so let's be professional. This is the Wednesday night Bible study for Parkview Church of God, and so we'll make it official. Uh, it really is a treat. I wish we could be there in person, obviously, but uh, at least this way we can share and, and, and hopefully be able to communicate with one another. Uh, if you have any questions uh, after tonight's Bible study, uh, you can text them to Terry any time of the night. He said, all hours through the night, something I say makes you think of something, feel free just to text him and he'll answer any questions you have about that. I want to share tonight uh, on the topic of the theology of suffering. Now, I know that doesn't sound very encouraging. It doesn't sound very good. It is kind of timely, though. We are in the midst of a lot of suffering um, right now in our, in our country, in the world right now, we, we are going through a lot of things, uh, a lot of turmoil, a lot of suffering. And I just want to make sure we understand that sometimes what we think suffering is, is not necessarily what somebody halfway around the world thinks suffering is, but it doesn't make our suffering any less legitimate. It's okay for you to, to suffer, uh, and, and feel like, you're going through something that's not, I, I'll never forget one of the, the first time I went to Africa, uh, I had been in Romania with Terry, Pastor Terry, earlier in the year, and uh, later on that year, uh, this is back in 2011, uh, the first time I went to Africa, and, and it was an incredible experience, My, I taught all week long and at, at a conference there, and then on the Sunday, we, we just had the privilege of just going and attending somewhere, and I asked the president of the Bible College, I said, where can we go and make a difference? I don't want to go where everybody always goes. Where? And he said, well, you know, our, our, our uh, groundskeeper, uh, he, he just, his name is Alex. He just went to start to pastor a small little church. He said it would really bless him if we kind of were with him. I said, that's great. Let's go. We went, and this place was, had three sides to it, corrugated metal, roof the same way, holes in it. I'm glad it wasn't raining that day. We'd have been wet. They had just because Pastor Alex had some, some maintenance experience, he knew how to pour concrete. They were so proud they had a concrete floor instead of a dirt floor. And they had made a major upgrade. Uh, no back wall at all, but, but the concrete slab floor. We worshiped together. It was an amazing day for me. Got on a plane and I was coming home. And on my way home, hurricanes had started to come through. This was in August of the year. So a hurricane had come through and had knocked power out all over Richmond, um, to, to the point that the power company was saying it, it could be several days to a week before we can get power back on. And when I got back home from that trip, I saw where it was middle of the week and churches had already 
canceled their services. And, and I thought, what in the world? Just because they don't have power? We didn't have power where I was last Sunday. Those people didn't have any power. They didn't have a sound system, they didn't have anything. That's truly suffering. It was hot, there was no air conditioning, no padded pews. And I looked in one of the churches that had closed or announced they were gonna be closed was my friend, Terry. He was pastoring in Richmond at the time and he had already canceled service. I thought, I called him up. Oh, I was indignant. Uh, Terry, are you really, have you really already canceled your services? Sunday's three days away. He said, well, yeah, we, had, we, we won't have power. I said, so what? You should have seen where I was in church last Sunday. Oh, I was, I was letting him have it. I, we didn't have power. We only had three walls, concrete slab, wooden benches. And he said, Paul, you know, a good large percentage of this church are senior adults. I said, well, I know that. He said, you know, we're on a well here at this church. And I said, so? He said, well, with no electricity, the well won't run. And that means we don't have restrooms. And I can't do that. I can't have people, majority of, of an older age, come and not have any restrooms at all. And I suddenly realized that where I was, they didn't have power, but they also didn't have running water. They had outhouses. No power didn't affect them at all. We live in a different place. And I said all that to say this. For one, to shame your pastor a little bit. No, not really. But I, I do want us to understand that, that sometimes we can almost, if, if you had any experience or, you know, a missionary comes and you hear experiences of things in places that are not like where we are, third world countries, or, or places where they just aren't as blessed as we are here in America. Sometimes we can almost feel guilty for feeling like we go through anything that we consider a hardship. Can I tell you, it's okay. Uh, listen, if, if your second car is in the shop and you're down to one and you're having to coordinate with your kids and, and everything, that's tough. And now, most people around the world would love to have a car. But I don't think it's okay to feel shame because we live in a blessed country and because we do this. It's okay. So when I say suffering tonight, there's lots of levels of suffering. We do not understand the suffering that people, the Christians in China are going through. But that doesn't mean we don't suffer. That doesn't mean that having to wear a mask in the Walmart isn't a, a, really, a hardship for some of us. And, and it's tough. It's something we do. And so I want us to understand that, that when we talk about suffering, it's all across the board, any kind of suffering. Um, I, I want us to start tonight, I think it's a good idea, to let's look at what's, what's God's view of suffering. What does he think about suffering? Well, first of all, God sees all suffering. Exodus 3 and 7, God is speaking to Moses here. And he, then the Lord told him, I have certainly seen the oppression of my people in Egypt. I've heard their cries of distress because of their harsh slave drivers. Yes, I am aware of their suffering. We see here, this is way back in the children of Israel, but God doesn't change. We know that God sees suffering. He knows it's there. He's aware. He knows it's there. The second thing is God doesn't just see all suffering. God hears all suffering. Even in that verse, he said, I hear their cries. Listen to what he says in Psalm twenty-two, twenty-four: 24. For he has not ignored or belittled the suffering of the needy. He has not turned his back on them, but has listened to their cries for help. God hears your cry. When you're suffering, when you're going through something, God knows about it. He sees it. God sees it. God hears all suffering. And God cares about all suffering. Matthew 10, 29 says, What is the price of two sparrows? One copper coin? But not a single sparrow can fall to the ground without your father knowing about it or without him knowing it. And the very hairs on your head are all numbered. So don't be afraid. You are more valuable to God than a whole flock of sparrows. Now, right here is where I want to say something about the hairs of your head being numbered and my cousin Daryl, but I'm not going to go there. I'm not going to do that. I think it's just important to understand that God has the very minute details of our life. He said a sparrow, two sparrows aren't even worth one copper coin, but not a single sparrow can fall to the ground without him knowing it. He cares. And yes, even though the hairs on my head gets fewer every day, God keeps track of that. 
I don't know why, but God cares. He cares about our suffering. He, he, he sees our suffering. He hears our suffering. And he cares about our suffering. Here's a real controversial one. God allows all suffering. Now, I, I know this is something that probably gets argued about in, in Christian circles a lot. I just, I, I want us to hear, listen to what Jesus said in John 16, 33. He said, I have told you all this. Now, he had just been telling them how the world's going to hate him. He's getting ready to leave the earth. He's explaining to them how he's going to be, be crucified and, and he's going to, they're not going to have him much longer. He says, I've told you all this so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth, you will have many trials and sorrows, but take heart because I have overcome the world. Now, we love the last part of that verse. We quote that one all the time. There's going to be trials and sorrows. We've got to brush past that, but I've overcome. And that's true. He has overcome. But he says, you will have, not you might have. Not, there's a good chance you might have. Not if you're a sinner, you'll have. Not if you do something, make me mad, you'll have. He just says, you will have trials and sorrows. You will go through suffering. Now, when I say that, that God allows it, um, this, this is what the word there, when it says trials and sorrows in this translation, in, in NIV, it says troubles, you'll have troubles. In the King, the King James and ESV, it says you'll have tribulation. All of those words uh, are, are English words for the, the Greek word that means this, an oppressive state of physical, mental, social, or economic adversity. I, I, I can tell you that describes me right now, right where we are, right in the middle of all this crisis, a, a state of physical, mental, social, or economic, economic adversity. You're going to have that, he says. And here's the thing. If you believe God can remove your suffering, and I do, I pray every day, every day I pray that God will take away this COVID. I, 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 I think it's okay to do that. There's nothing wrong with praying that God will bring healing, that God will remove disease. But I also know that God says we're going to have suffering. Now, if I believe God can remove it, then if it's still here, I have to believe that God allows it. You can't have it both ways. You can't say, well, it's here because of God didn't allow it to happen. Uh, that's just a sinful world. Well, then if that means God has no control over it. That means he can't do anything about it if he didn't allow it. Well, I, I'm sure you're not jumping up and shouting over that one, but it's important to understand that God sees our suffering, he hears our suffering, he cares about our suffering, and he allows suffering. Suffering. Let's look at some truths about suffering. Three simple truths about suffering. First of all, suffering changes our perspective. Uh, the Apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians 1.8 said, we, we think you ought to know, dear brothers and sisters, about the trouble we went through in the province of Asia. We were crushed and overwhelmed beyond our ability to endure, and we thought we would never live through it. In fact, we expected to die. But as a result, as a result of that suffering, we stopped relying on ourselves, and we learned to rely only on God who raises the dead. Paul says here, we thought we were even going to die at this point. We were, we were hard-pressed. Things were tough, but it gave us a new perspective. Because of this, as a result of this, we stopped relying on ourselves. We learned to rely only on God. We realized that only God was our source, that without him, we could do nothing. It gives you a new perspective. It doesn't just change our perspective. It exposes our purpose. Paul says in, in chapter 4 of 2 Corinthians, some of you probably could quote this, we are pressed on every side by troubles, but we are not crushed. We are perplexed, but not driven to despair. We are hunted down, but never abandoned by God. We get knocked down, but we are not destroyed. Through suffering, our bodies continue to share in the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus 
may also be seen in our bodies. Paul says here, through the suffering that we go through, that we share in the death of Jesus, and that way we, we see then the life of Jesus is seen in our bodies. We share in him his death and his resurrection. In other words, it exposes our purpose, why we're here. Suffering lets us see uh, what our purpose is, and, and it gives us something beyond just the surface things. Suffering changes our perspective, it exposes our purpose, and it increases his power. On down in chapter 12 of that same letter, 2 Corinthians, Paul says this, So to keep me from becoming proud, I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger from Satan to torment me and keep me from becoming proud. Three different times I begged the Lord to take it away. Each time he said, this is what God said to him, my grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. That's what he said to Paul. My grace is sufficient, a lot of older translations say. So now, Paul says, I am glad to boast about my weaknesses so that the power of Christ can work through me. That's why I take pleasure in my weaknesses and in the insults, hardships, persecutions, and troubles that I suffer for Christ. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Suffering not only changes our perspective, not only does it expose our purpose, but here, Paul says, suffering actually increases his power. Because when I'm suffering, when I'm weak, when I'm struggling, when I'm facing all these insults, hardships, persecutions, he says, that's when, that's when I'm strong. That's when you see the strength that he has, the power that he has. That's when it rises up in you. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, we see that happen in us. When we are weak, he says. Our suffering can teach us a lot of things. Now, I love how Paul says this in, in verse 9 of this. Um, in, in the English Standard Version, it says it this way. My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Now, th there's a lot of words in there, uh, and, and I just kind of want to break this verse down for a second. Uh, the word grace, the English word grace, is the Greek word charis. Uh, and it means unmerited favor, divine influence on, on a heart. It's the divine unmerited favor of God. Uh, then, then sufficient there is the Greek word archaeo. It means eliminating a barrier or sufficient or exactly enough. Exactly enough. Then the word power, we're familiar with this word. That's the, the Greek word dunamis. It's where we get our word dynamite from, same root. It means explosive or miraculous power, not, not just the, the power like the power came on, or we've got power, but like miraculous, powerful, dynamite kind of power. Uh, then that phrase made perfect. He says, my power, this is God speaking here. He says, my power is made perfect. Uh, that's the Greek word teletai, and, and it means completely fulfilled. It's the same root as the word that's translated finished. When Jesus on the cross said, it is finished. It is completely fulfilled. It's actually an accounting term. Uh, my mom would love that. It's, it's a term that actually accountants kind of use to mean it is like paid in full. It is complete. It's done. There's nothing left to be done. It is completely balanced, completely finished. It's the same word Jesus used on the cross. He says, my power is made perfect, fulfilled in you. And then in weakness is, is the word asthenia. And, and it, it, it can mean disease or infirmity or brokenness. So, so let's, let's look at what this verse says if we kind of break it down in, in, in its, in its, with all those meanings. God's divine influence, his grace, is exactly enough to meet your every need. For his explosive, miraculous power is made completely perfect in you when you are broken before him. 
I love how that breaks down and it it helps me every day to know that my brokenness is is not something to be shameful that when I get to a place when I'm in trouble or their trials or their suffering and I'm feeling broken that's when God has the opportunity for his grace to shine for his miraculous power to be made perfect in me the question is not will you suffer but will you allow God to work through you when suffering happens when it occurs I see that Paul in the book of Philippians in the first chapter gives us some questions and, and, and I want to kind of wrap things up with these questions here in, in first uh, first chapter of Philippians Paul says, will you allow God to use your suffering to advance the gospel? Listen to what he says in, in verse 12 of chapter 1. And I want you to know, my dear brothers and sisters, that everything that has happened to me here, here, by the way, let's pause there for a second, here is in prison. Paul's writing this from jail. He is, he is bound. He is in prison, chained. He says, I want you to know that everything that's happened to me here has helped to spread the good news for everyone here, including the whole palace guard, knows that I am in chains because of Christ. Paul asks us here, he says, will you allow God to use your suffering to advance the gospel? Paul was suffering. He was in jail, imprisoned. And he said, but you don't understand. This way, now I can talk to prison guards. I can, I can talk to, he said, the whole palace guard knows that the reason I'm in chains is because of Christ. In other words, I am preaching the gospel. People are seeing Christ in me while I'm suffering. The question for you is, will you allow whatever you're suffering through right now, or if it's this current crisis or maybe something nobody knows about, will you allow God to use that suffering to advance the gospel? Will you walk out and through that suffering literally let Christ in your body share the gospel? Here's another question Paul asked. Will you allow God to use your suffering to encourage others? On the next verse there, Philippians chapter 1 verse 14 says, and because of my imprisonment, most of the believers here have gained confidence and boldly speak God's message without fear. He says, not only is the gospel being spread, but God is using my suffering to encourage other believers. Now they're being more bold. They're sharing the gospel. They're speaking God's message without fear because they can see what's happening in, in me and I'm allowing God's suffering to not just to, to make me sad or to make me kind of curl up in a ball and want to die. Now, listen, I, I've gone through some things and that's all I wanted to do. But I, I, I wrestle with this question and I want to be like Paul. I want to be like the Apostle Paul who, who didn't just turn inward when he went through suffering, but that he encouraged others and others saw Christ in him. I, I will never forget hearing, um, I, I wasn't here a lot. We were living in Pennsylvania and my, my granny, Hollifield, was in the hospital with cancer. She was in the hospital a long time. She suffered a lot. And over the last several weeks, I know she suffered more than she should have. And there were times as a teenager, I questioned God and said, God, why? Why, why would you let her suffer like that? She's an incredible godly woman. Why would you let her do that? And then I remember hearing the stories from the nurses that came to her funeral, that were at the visitation, that talked and shared and said she was constantly quoting scripture to me, praying for me, encouraging me. I will never forget her. She made an impact on people. She didn't allow her suffering to just make her feel sorry for herself. I'm not saying she never did that, but she certainly had moments and times where she allowed God to use that suffering she was going through to encourage others. And yes, to, to advance the gospel as well. Will you do that with the suffering that you're going through now? Will you allow God to not only advance the gospel, but to encourage others? And then 
Thirdly, will you allow God to use your suffering to reveal your motives? Paul continues here in verse 15. He says, it, it's true that some are preaching out of jealousy and rivalry, but others preach about Christ with pure motives. They preach because they love me, for they know I have been appointed to defend the good news. Those others do not have pure motives as they preach about Christ. They preach with selfish ambition, not sincerely, intending to make my chains more painful to me. But that doesn't matter. Whether their motives are false or genuine, the message about Christ is being preached either way. So I rejoice and I will continue to rejoice. Now, there's a lot in this little section here that we could talk about, but I just want to focus on the idea that, that when we are suffering, if we do, we can allow God to actually examine our motives, to reveal the motives that we have, to make sure our heart is right, to make sure that, that we're doing things for the right reasons. Now, Paul here comes to the conclusion and says, even if, you do, even if there's some people doing it for the wrong reason, the gospel is being preached, I'm going to rejoice. But I want to encourage you that whatever suffering, whatever you're going through, allow God to, to not only help you advance the gospel, to not only encourage others, but to reveal your motives, to reveal what it is you're doing, why you're doing it. Make sure you're doing it for the right reasons. And then lastly... Paul asks us, will you allow God to use your suffering to increase your love for him? This is how he concludes this little section here. Next verse in verse 19. For I know that as you pray for me and the spirit of Jesus Christ helps me, this will lead to my deliverance. For I fully expect and hope that I will never be ashamed, but that I will continue to be bold for Christ as I have been in the past. It's important to see here that the Apostle Paul is an incredible suffering in jail. And he is believing, he says, for deliverance. I believe your prayers are going to help me to be delivered from this place. But, but when he closes out, he doesn't say, I fully expect and hope that I'm going to be out of here. He says, I hope and expect that I will never be ashamed but that I will continue to be bold for Christ as I have been in the past. He's saying, I'm going to allow God to use this time of suffering to help me know and love him even more, to be even more bold, to fall in love with him all over. I, 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 I hope that, you know, uh, even though we're talking about suffering and what we're going through, that somehow we can be encouraged in this. And I hope you will, will not only just hear God's word, but let it activate in you this week. Uh, let something happen in you that, that you will not only just understand and hear God's word and understand that the suffering is here and God can help you through it. That's important to know. But, but what is God going to do through this time of suffering? Will you allow him to, to use whatever we're going through? And again, your suffering may not have anything to do with the virus or or, or, or anything else that's going on in our world right now. It might be something deeply personal. It might be something that nobody knows about. You can choose to, to, to allow that suffering to affect you or to allow God to use that to advance the gospel, to encourage others, to reveal the motives of your own heart and to, to know and love him even more. Will you just, uh, right there where you are, will you uh, just take a time and, and, and let me pray for you right now? Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for your word. I thank you for uh, your word that challenges us, that encourages us, that lets us know what you feel about certain things and what, how, how you think they ought to work in our lives. God, I, I, I know what God's word says, but I just pray tonight that you will help us to put it into action, that you will let us, wherever we are tonight, let us ask you to do something with what we're going through, with this crisis, this time that is so challenging for all of us. God, will you allow it to, 
to advance the gospel? Will, will you allow it to, to encourage others? Help us to not focus on ourselves and the suffering we're going through, but on others and how it can encourage them. God, help us tonight to, to let that time of suffering, this time when, when things are not good and we're frustrated, allow it to reveal the motives of our heart so that we might do what we do with pure motives. God, and, and lastly, probably most importantly, allow the time of suffering that we're going through to cause us to rely on you more, to know you more, to love you even more, to be even more bold for the cause uh, of Christ. Heavenly Father, I thank you for, for what you're doing in the body right now during this time, specifically in this congregation in Newport News, that you would help them, Lord, to see who you are through the suffering, not just look for an escape out of it. We, we, we continue to pray for, for this disease to be eradicated and gone. We believe you can do it. But as long as it's here, God, help us to see change in our own lives, in the lives of other believers around us and the world around us. Let us make a difference and let them see that we respond to the, the, this suffering that we're all going through. Let us see that we respond differently because we have you with us. I thank you, Father, for, for hearing our prayers tonight, hearing the cry of your people Lord, we thank you, Father. We pray these things in the name of Jesus, your Son. In the power of the Holy Spirit, we agree together. And we say, Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for this incredible opportunity. And uh, I'll send it back over to Pastor Terry and let him close things out. Good night, everybody. Thank you, Pastor Paul, for your message tonight and the words from the scripture. We appreciate your ministry so much. We're thankful for all that you do for the body of Christ there locally as well as globally. And uh, I know that all of us here at Parkview have been blessed by uh, the message tonight and we appreciate so much him uh, sending that our way. Don't forget uh, in-person worship for those who are uh, feel comfortable in joining us and we we're doing everything we can to make a safe environment and we do hope that you can come on back those of you who haven't been able to be back yet and that we can uh, enjoy in-person worship again and once again we're doing everything we can to be sanitary and and you know not spread any disease so we want everybody to feel comfortable as possible and so 1030 on Sunday, join us in person in the Family Life Center. If you're going to join us online, it'll be on Facebook or YouTube, uh, both of those channels from the church, and uh, you can join us there online as well. Don't forget, Don and I love you. We're praying for you, and we can't wait to see you on Sunday, whether in person in the Family Life Center or online. God bless you. We love you. If you need anything, please let us know. God bless.